Okay, so last we get to standard error. Now the reason we do standard error is because when we graph it, we can put in what we call error bars, which actually show or indicate how much error you have on every group's trials. So uh, standard error is pretty simple, but Excel and Google Sheets can't actually calculate it. You need to actually put in the formula for it. The amount of error depends on your standard deviation divided by the square root of how many samples or trials that you had. Okay, so it's got to actually count up how many trials you did, find their square root, and that's what you divide into your sampling, um, your standard deviation. So how do we type that in? I'm going to bring it up a bit bigger here. So to get your standard error, you just simply say, okay, it equals what my standard deviation is. So select your standard deviation cell because you don't want to put in the number. You need to select it per cell. Tell it to divide with your slash. And then you have to get it to find the square root of how many trials you did. So first you've got to tell it square root. So start by typing in SQ. And as soon as you even do that, it'll bring up these options here. So select square root. And it'll say square root of what? Well, you actually need to find the square root of the number of trials that we had. And in this case, as you can see, we had 10 trials in our data. So I'm going to get to find the square root of 10. So I'll just put square root of brackets 10. Close brackets. Enter. And that's my standard error. I don't want all of those decimals there. We're going to make them smaller. And that's a lot more manageable. And again, we'll copy it down. So I've calculated the standard error of all of my different trials. So it looks like I've got a reasonably large amount of error for all of them, over 30% on every single trial. So when we actually graph this, it's not going to look fantastic. We do have a high amount of error, but we already knew that because of how wide our standard deviation was. Now, if you have lots and lots of trials and you don't want to count them up, or they're sometimes changing in number, here's another way to get it to do that. Instead of you telling it how many trials you did, you can get it to actually count the trials you did using that formula if you're interested. Okay, so that's how we do standard error. Next, I'm going to show you how to put that into a graph so it really allows the viewer to not only see your averages, but look at either your range or your error in that graph 